really is an adjunct, in my view, to the civil rights movement. Uh, there were rebellions going on throughout the country uh, by the African American community demanding civil rights. And uh, these rebellions uh, often took on a very militant character. There were very radical organizations such as the Panthers, the Young Lords, the Rainbow Coalition that were emerging. Uh, there was the struggle against the Vietnam War, which is another issue. But at the same time, there was this very powerful civil rights movement which encompassed tens of millions of uh, African-American people. And it was felt very much in the prisons, which was, uh, which were about 85% or in large majority uh, black, Latino, minorities in general. And uh, as a response to this growing struggle that was taking place in the prisons, specifically, uh, I recall the Auburn uh, Prison Rebellion, uh, the Women's House of Detention, the uh, well, there were struggles at uh, Elmira Prison. There were also struggles at in the tombs in New York City. This was a. This was an uprising. This was like a military uprising. Uh, there were several tunnels that we had to go through in order to get to the liberated area, as I would call it. Uh, there were several checkpoints where the the inmates had, you know, blockades and were armed with sticks and and anything they could get their hands on. Uh, they all were, you know, wearing masks so they wouldn't be identified. And uh, they asked, uh, they asked us to stay in the prison with them as guarantee of their safety. Uh, the bourgeois politicians wouldn't do it, and but we did. I don't recall really where I slept. I can't tell you where I slept. I just don't remember. Uh, but we did stay, and we told them yes, and they were very happy. Uh, after we went through several uh, checkpoints and through these tunnels, we went to the main area, and it was at night. Actually, it was at night. It was a huge, huge uh, area. You can imagine about a thousand uh, inmates. Uh, they had chains of guards of uh, security around us, uh, black, Latino, and white together. Uh, they were highly organized. There was a large uh, area uh, negotiating table on the right where the leaders of the uh, rebellion, Barkley and uh, Big Black and uh, Chapman and others uh, were seated. Um, this delegation came in, which included myself, members of the Young Lords, uh, Counselor was there, Arthur Eve, uh, and, and some of the others. Uh, and they were, they just greeted me especially with tremendous solidarity, they hugged. Um, They, uh, they, uh, there was a, a bonding.
And then they took us on a, a tour. They took me on a tour. I was alone with them. And we went into the areas of the cells. They showed us how small the cells were. And then they explained how their the harsh conditions had led to the rebellion. They explained how they were being uh, gassed and beaten indiscriminately. They were often put into solitary confinement. They felt they were being exploited and asked to work for 10 cents an hour producing furniture for the uh, court system. They felt that there was a tremendous racism institutionalized against them by the white guard population. Uh, they felt that these conditions had driven them to, to take over the prison. Mm -hmm. Again, this rebellion was really part of a broad political current involving millions of people. The Panthers were being uh, repressed uh, all over the country where they had sympathizers, members. They were being thrown into jail. They had Panther factions within the jails. Uh, for example, George Jackson, if I recall properly, was given uh, a position within the Panther Party, and uh, he called for recruitment. People went into the Panthers. When the, the civil rights movement is talked about, they usually exclude the more militant wing of the civil rights movement, which was there. And, and, uh, and, and uh, they don't properly put the prison struggle in perspective uh, as part of that movement. Um, but this was really like a, like an uprising, different from a general strike. It, 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 for five days they held, you know, they held territory. They didn't give it up. They didn't have any internal uh, divisions. They, they stood their ground and they said, we're not going to give in. You're either going to kill us or, you know, or we're going to get our demands. Uh, they were just, they were solid. It was like a, I make an analogy to the Paris Commune, like the thing. When they, they were surrounded. They knew they were surrounded. They didn't know what was going on politically outside. They had no parties there. They had no weapons. You know, they had no guns. They had no. Uh, but they decided they they would not give in, and their uh, their sacrifice was not in vain. It inspired millions of other people outside. Uh, their deaths will live on in history forever.